What's up, everybody? It's JT Sports back to you guys with another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the Chicago Bears and Pat players for the 2019 NFL season. The first player that I have on this list is quarterback Mitchell Trubisky. Last season, Mitchell Trubisky somehow made it to the Pro Bowl, had 3,223 passing yards, 24 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, and completed 66.6% .6 of his passes. And I still don't know how he made it to the Pro Bowl, man. I mean, his season was pretty solid, but is it was it really Pro Bowl caliber? I don't know. But, I mean, another argument you could say is, can you really say it was any other good quarterbacks at that point who could, you say, deserve to be in the Pro Bowl over to Mitchell Trubisky? But overall, Mitchell Trubisky showed a lot of development in his second year. Had some bad games, had some great games. But the thing is... How consistent is he going to be going into the 2019 NFL season? Because a big part of this Chicago Bears offense relies on how good Mr. Trubisky is going to be. If Mr. Trubisky is going to be inconsistent, one week he's great, one week he's not great, then the Chicago Bears, I think the best they could go would be at least 10 wins or 11. But in this division, with this division being as tight as it is, and the NFC North, you cannot afford Mitchell Trubisky to have any terrible weeks, man. He has to be solid every time he takes the field, every single week, man, because all it takes is one bad performance, and that could cost them a loss, and that loss could be what keeps them from repeating as being back-to-back -back NFC North champions because this NFC North division is very, very close. The Detroit Lions are very improved. The Green Bay Packers are improved on the defense side of the ball. Then you also got to talk about the Minnesota Vikings who are improved on the offensive line as well. So, Mitch Trubisky, man, the Chicago Bears season, and how would they be able to win the NFC North all relies on how consistent is he going to be able to be in 2019. Next up, I have halfback Tyreek Cohen, who went to the Pro Bowl last year. He was also an All-Pro, 444 rushing yards, three touchdowns, 4.5 yards per carry. He also had 725 receiving yards, 70 run receptions, and five touchdowns. This dude in Matt Nagy's system is a freaking god. He is a freaking walking pinball machine. This guy is bouncing off tackles, doing spin moves, doing juke moves. He is the human joystick. And I see why they call this dude the human joystick because this dude plays football like he is playing Madden. This dude is spamming the B button. He's spamming the hurdle button. He's spamming the joystick on the controller, doing spin moves, all kinds of stuff, man. And the sky's just the limit for this guy, man. I will love watching this dude play. He's very entertaining to play. Watch. He's very energetic. And I think he's going to be in for another good season, man, because in Matt Nagy's system, this guy is basically a freaking god, man. And I look forward to watching him this season going into the 2019 NFL season. Next up, we have wide receiver Allen Robinson, who last season didn't have the season I thought he would have, but it was pretty solid. 754 receiving yards, 55 receptions, and four touchdowns. Thought Allen Robinson would have a better season, but Allen Robinson is more of a deep, big body deep threat than he is as a move the chain wide receiver. Um, I found that out over this past season just re-watching games and stuff like that not a big move the target type of dude like how you expect guys his size like julio jones and whatnot to be but he's just a big deep threat and i think he has potential to be more than that this season you know he was just in that first season of that matt Nagy offense now he's going into year two think he's going to have a little bit better chemistry with Mitchell Trubisky, and I think he's going to have a 1,000-yard season. I think he's going to make it to the Pro Bowl this year. So next up, we have tight end Trey Burton. Half back David Montgomery. Chicago Bears picked him in the third round of this past year's NFL draft out of Iowa State. And this dude, he's a one-cut, put his foot in the dirt, run, hit the gap, run you over. He's not going to have those big explosive 60 yard touchdowns because he's not that fast but he's a guy who's going to give you a consistent five yards 
every time he touches the ball, he's going to run guys over. He's just going to be a very reliable running back. He's going to be that running back that you put down on third and inches, fourth and inches, fourth and going. You be like, hey, give me that, give me them yards, give me that extra one yard or that extra inch that I need to get that first down or that touchdown or whatnot. So Dave Montgomery, man, he's going to have a pretty solid year, rookie year in my opinion. And don't be surprised if you see this guy's name pop up in that Offensive Rookie of the Year talk or conversation. Because as we already know, Matt Nagy, this guy has a knack for getting the best out of his football players. He knows how to utilize everybody on his team. And I expect that to be the same case with halfback David Montgomery. Next up, we have defensive end slash linebacker Khalil Mack. This guy can do it all. All pro. Pro Bowler looked like he had he looked more rejuvenated. Now, correct me. I know I'm not the only person who has to realize this, right? Now I know of Oakland, he was pretty good, but with the Chicago Bears, man, he just looked rejuvenated. Like he actually looked happy to be playing football this year. And it showed, man, because this guy was a complete game worker for the Chicago Bears this year. 47 tackles, 12 and a half sacks, one interception, four pass deflections, six force fumbles, and two fumble recoveries. But I feel the stats don't show the impact that Khalil Mack had on Chicago Bears this year in that defense. When we go back to that Green Bay Packers game, the first, it was one of the first, I believe it was the first week of the NFL or whatnot. But Khalil Mack, I was wondering. Why am I watching the Chicago Bears and the Green Bay Packers play on Sunday Night Football? That is a boring matchup to watch. But Khalil Mack made it very entertaining. This guy single-handedly can win games. And you you don't normally hear somebody saying that about a defensive player. Normally we hear that from the quarterback position. But Khalil Mack, one of the rare generational talents that we have in the NFL plan today that can single-handedly go out and win the game for you. He had his hand all in that Green Bay Packers game. He also did it several other times this season, but that Green Bay Packers what game was just a symbolization that Khalil Mack is a football god, and he is a man amongst men on the football field. Pretty hard to stop, man. And this season, expecting him to keep up the production, expecting another All-Pro season in Khalil Mack, man. I think it's official now to say that Khalil Mack is a football god. That's what he is. You cannot stop this guy. Even if he's not getting the backfield, he's the rough, he's disrupting the game some way, somehow. You know, like when you squish a cockroach, but when you squish a cockroach, you know the cockroach still finds a way when it's on his back to flip itself over and it just gets to running over the house again. That's what Khalil Mack is, man. Just when you think you found one way to stop him, he finds another way to be effective. So Khalil Mack, man, is a football god at this point. He cannot be stopped. Next up, we have linebacker Raquan Smith. Raquan Smith had an outstanding rookie season, 121 tackles, five sacks, one interception, five pass deflections. He was just as good as advertised. Sideline and sideline linebacker, very good in coverage. That's what Raquan Smith was. And going into year two, I believe he's going to be even better. He's probably going to have, he's probably, don't be surprised if you see him and Darius Leonard going neck to neck for who's going to be leading the NFL in tackles next season because he is going to have that kind of an impact. He is that good of a tackler. He's everywhere on the freaking football field. That speed, the run sideline to sideline. Also had five sacks, which really impressed me because I didn't really think he was going to do that much when it came to getting to the quarterback. But five sacks, that's pretty solid. Um, This season, I don't think he'll have more than five sacks. I think he might even have less. I think he's going to be more used and when it comes to just you know, being the coverage and tackling running backs and stuff like that. But I'm five sacks. I could see him doing that again, but I wouldn't be surprised if he had probably like three or two sacks this year because I think he's probably going to be more utilized in the running game. But he's a very effective blitzer, but I just don't see him having more than five sacks this year. Next up, we have cornerback Kyle Fuller, who was an all-pro. He was a pro bowler. He had 55 tackles, 7 interceptions, and 21 pass deflections. And this year, he actually was able to haul in some of those passes, man, because Kyle Fuller is the best cornerback in all the football, in my opinion. Because, look, if this guy was able to catch, if he had way better hands than what he has, 
he would be having at least 10, 11 interceptions. And that's facts. This guy has came close to nabbing so many interceptions, but you know he just has butterfingers. It's a reason why you ever heard the expression about why it's a reason why guys play wide receiver and it's a reason why guys play cornerback. Kyle Fuller fits that description. This guy, if he had above, if his hands were very good, right? If his hands were just a little bit better, this guy would be a guy who would be having 10 interceptions. Every single year, in my opinion, he is the best cornerback in all of football. And the stats show it. Not too many cornerbacks that you could make a legit argument about and say that they are toe-for-toe, the best cornerback in the NFL that can compete with Kyle Fuller. This guy nearly comes close to his interception. Intercepting at least every pass that gets thrown in his direction, man. Not a lot of cornerbacks who you can say that about. Next up, we have safety Eddie Jackson, who is also an all-pro. He made it to the Pro Bowl as well, had 51 tackles, two interceptions, 15 pass deflections, two forced fumbles, and run fumble recovery. One of the best safeties in the NFL out of Alabama, Eddie Jackson, very good in coverage. And doesn't get any better than him. So this Chicago Bears defense is freaking stacked. It is phenomenal. It's going to be the best defense in all the football this season. And look out, NFC North. If it's a reason why the Chicago Bears, if you're looking for a reason why you think Chicago Bears are going to win the NFC North again, it's going to be that defense. That defense is toe-for-toe -to -toe the best defense in the NFL talent-wise and schematically. So let me know what you guys think about this list down in the comment section down below. Comment some videos that you would like to see. Also, make sure to like the video and subscribe for more NFL videos and content. And thanks for watching.